this is a big step for me. And I finally did it. And it's not like it's a big, big deal for many of you guys, but for me, it's a huge leap and it's going to make a huge difference in my business. And I'm going to tell you about that here on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. The following program contains disturbing materials that may not be suitable for some resellers. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is John with Flippin' Ain't Easy. And yes, I did it. I cannot believe I've done it. I haven't really done anything but make it official. I haven't done the work yet, but just knowing that I, I've been able to lay the path to be able to grow. Growth starts now for us. So you guys know we are capped with the space that we have. You know, we have the toilet seats sitting here. You don't even know about the toilet seats that are just piled up in Jenna's shipping room. We got toilet seats that are in the garage that are stacked up. We have uh, these uh, transfer unit, these uh, laser, these Rico uh, transfer unit kits for Rico printers, I guess, and brand new factory seal. There's about 20 or 30 of those that are stacked up. I think it's safe to say that I've reached my tipping point here. My cupeth runneth over and I need more room. I need a bigger cup. And as you can see, I'm looking at stuff that's listed and that's listed, but that ain't right. Neither is we walk through that's listed. That's listed. Some of that's listed. That ain't. And as you see, I go from my home to my driveway. And guess what? I got to do a funny dance just to get through. Just to get through. This is what I'm dealing with, folks. Just no room. These are racks right here full of stuff that should be listed stuff. But I don't have a place to put listed stuff anymore. Got a little bit of room here, but that ain't cutting it. That stuff needs to get listed. So that's kind of what's holding me back, too, is once I get this stuff listed, well, where the hell am I going to put it? You know, things that don't even have boxes. Trying to figure out half what this stuff is. Making sure it works. Making sure it's complete. Heck, this stuff ain't listed. Right? Figuring it all out. But what do you do? When you're that goldfish in the bowl and you just don't have the room anymore. In fact, I've got a carload of stuff. Jenna's not here. She took the car with the stuff in the car to run an errand real fast. So she's going to look like Sanford and son going to the store with all kinds of stuff in the SUV. When I should have dropped that stuff off somewhere else. And that's kind of where I'm going with this. Somewhere else ain't here. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. So this is all the stuff I picked up today. There's Jenna. Why are you filming? Because I love it. So got a carload of stuff. Yeah, it's a shit show turning. It is. So we're going to. We're going to get this stuff and the front seat. Don't forget the front seat. So we've got a passenger in there. I probably could carpool with this stuff. So, yeah, that's our problem. That's our pain point. I have nowhere to put this right now as we speak. Maybe half of it, but not all of it. So it's figuring it out. And I think I have the answer in this video. So there's a lot of space that's being taken up by just stuff that is listed, but really doesn't have a lot of traction. You know, call it a bad buy, I guess. But we're talking stuff that sells for like 40, 50, 60 dollars that like those transfer kits I'm only into for like two bucks a piece. And I've sold a couple of them. If I throw them out, I've already made the money back. And honestly, we have every two weeks in a large item pickup where they the trash company comes and they just pick up whatever we leave out there. I've been tempted many a times to just take it out and just put it out in the, on the curb because it's just in the way. And you know, you're talking one sale like every two months. That's not the kind of sell through rate I want anyway. Uh, so 
call that a bad buy if you want. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep two. I only have two of the orange toilet seats left anyway. I've got two of the teal, uh, like 30 of the teal ones. So I'm going to leave two of those here. And I'm going to leave two of the transfer uh, kits here. And I'm going to put the rest of it in storage. Yes, that's what I've done. I have taken the leap to do something I have not wanted to do. And, you know, the mindset has always been to, you know, once it's paid for, it's paid for. You know, you have it here. It doesn't cost anything to store the items here. And that was working only for so long because as I'm growing this store, I'm growing my second store, you know, the store that I call crap. But things are selling there. And it's a lot of the slower sell-through rate, low ASP stuff that I don't want in my main store. I'm pushing over there. A lot of the parts, the parts are repair items. And it's as I list these things, they're, they're taking up my available space. So I have dedicated racks for things that are listed, but the space is almost gone. Now, I have a couple racks dedicated for sort of an area where I call a staging area. So once I pull it out of my car, you know, I, I source it, bring it home, I put it in that staging area. Well, that's already in overflow status to where uh, in front of the racks, I've got a pile of boxes that are stacked up. And on this side of these racks that are in use, I have a pile of boxes. So when we're going from the house to the car, to the garage, we're kind of doing the, you know, the dance moves that I don't have. And sometimes we're, we're kicking boxes. It's just, just too much. Now I'm going to free up some racks that now can be used for the storage of things that are listed. Um, maybe take some of the space in that other room and start to store like smalls, shoes, ex like parts and accessories, things that can go in bins. And I can see where, as before, I was trying to keep the store around 200 items. I can really see myself getting it to three, four, 500 items. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot to you, but uh, provided I don't cheat and I, I sell the same level uh, of merchandise, the same ASP, the same sell-through rate type of items that I've been sourcing all along, then uh, I can at least, now, even if I go from 200 to 500 uh, units in my store, and I don't like counting the number of units, uh, if I go from 15000 to, let's say, $35,000 in merchandise in my store, I'd like to think that I can at least uh, add another 50% to what I'm making on eBay. And, and that's just being conservative. So we went yesterday. I went yesterday with Archie when he went to go and uh, check out a storage locker that he he won for 20 bucks. And it just so happened to be that this storage facility was about a mile away from where I, I live. I mean, he's 20 miles away from me. So he's like, hey, meet me down here. We're going to check out this uh, storage locker that I just won. So I went down there and it was a nice facility. And of course, uh, we're at the front desk. I'm asking questions. Price seemed right to me. Uh, I think uh, they had said a 10 by 10 for like 129. It's not climate controlled. You can get one. They had one available. That's a 20 by 10, 20, 20 feet by 10 feet that uh, was climate controlled. And had like a a nice, they said they said dock access. It's no dock access, like a dock, like I thought there was. But at least there's a lo there's loading access and uh, like a sliding door, not an actual door that you have to pull open. Um, went in there, and that one was two twenty five for a month for that large of a unit, climate controlled. And in Vegas, that's pretty huge, climate controlled. It was one hundred and five degrees today. So uh, we checked out all the different options and we went with the 20 by 10. As you can see here, it's a pretty good sized storage unit. And uh, I mean, I could even bring my racks if I want. I'd probably end up buying some more racks. But the way I see it is how it's going to help me. And it's going to really change the way I do my business. I'm going to pick up pallets on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Try to pick up two a week. Go pick up my individual items that I get in town 
maybe on Thursdays. And every time I pick up something, it gets taken directly to the storage unit. Okay. And then every morning I wake up, it's going to be part of my process. I'm going to make myself get up earlier. That's going to be part of my process. And that is uh, get up at seven when they open, shoot down there, pick up like 10 to 12 items. Now, knowing that I'd say two to three of those items are going to be just straight up trash, not working. Maybe I part them out, put them on the other account, but I have enough stuff to get through the day, right? And if I ever come to a, a point where like, well, I, I'm kind of out of stuff, I can just shoot back over there. It's only five minutes to get over there, five, 10 minutes depending on traffic. And uh, it, it seems very doable. Now, I don't like the idea of having my stuff in a storage unit. I don't like the idea of having to, you know, stop what I'm doing, drive to where I need to go to get the stuff and bring it back. But I can't have everything. I can't have everything I want. I can't have it all here and grow at the same time. I can't have my cake and eat it too. Something has to give. And working, I mean, literally dancing around boxes to do the work is just too much. It slows me down. And in fact, all the stuff that's accumulating around me, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but it's overwhelming. You get this, this fear, not this feeling of just feeling overwhelmed. Like, where do I even begin with this pile of stuff that I have to list? So if I uh, control what I bring here, it, it's not as overwhelming. And I think I've, I used to do this before when I had the stuff in pallets in the garage and I would put it in like a big tote. This is when I was dealing with some more of the smalls. I bring it upstairs to my office at the time we we're living in a two story. That's hell. Let's not even go there. And uh, that was my routine, but I didn't get overwhelmed because I had everything just in a tote. And even though things were accumulating in the garage, it wasn't, it wasn't in my immediate, you know, eyesight. I, what I saw was, was doable. If I tried to, to pull all that off and list from the garage with all that stuff surrounding me, I probably wouldn't have been as productive. So I, I just think that there's a lot of it psychological, but it's just being real, being realistic. Um, I only have so much space to work with, and this is going to be huge for my business. I, I'm that fish in a goldfish in a little bowl. And uh, someone is now pouring me into the koi pond. And now it's, it's only on me. If I don't grow, it's because I failed, right? It's uh, the environment. I have no excuses. I can't say anymore. Hey guys, I just don't have a place to put this stuff. I mean, how often have you guys heard me tell you, Hey, I have no place to put this stuff. So now I can't use that as an excuse. Now, if I was to do no more in sales than what I am doing now, I I'd think I'd be fine. But I want to recession-proof what I'm doing in the sense that, look, I'm used to, over the summer, you know, people saying, oh, you're bragging. No, this is just to give you a point of reference because I, I know there's someone out there that could benefit from this information. So if I'm making, say, $14,000 on average between, you know, June and August, well, that's kind of where I'd like to be. Things are good when I'm there. But it, it, when I get to certain times of the year, like last year, like 10,000, that's that's a big drop if you're dealing with about a 48% margin. So I would rather add more product because if 200 items are working for me to get me those, those kind of numbers, then what's 500 items going to do for me? So I'll let you decide how much that'll add to my bottom line. But I think you guys understand where I'm going. I, I think that sometimes if you have good stuff that people want and there's still demand for, you can list your way through slow sales. And that's kind of what my thought process is. Even though we talk about, you know, some people will disagree, some people will agree how it doesn't matter, John, if you go and have a storage unit, you go out tomorrow and put 500 items up in your store, you're still going to be capped by eBay on how many items that they allow you to sell in a given period of time. There might be something to that, right? But there may not be. And uh, I'm only going to find out if I, if I allow myself to find out. And I'll never find out if I am in 
uh, the little goldfish bowl and I, I'm afraid to expand. And these are the chances that we take. Do I want to spend 225 bucks a month on a storage unit? No, I don't. But sometimes we have to invest that into our business and give ourselves the opportunity to grow. And if we don't give ourselves the opportunity to grow, who's really at fault? Can I sit here and point my finger at eBay? Can I sit here and point my finger at lack of sourcing opportunities? Can I, uh, should I, you know, blame this, blame that, blame the weather like some channels do? Or do I simply do what I know that I need to do, whether it's comfortable or not, and let's just see what happens. I mean, we might be having this conversation in six months where that was a stupid idea, but I'm never going to know unless I do it. And I think there's some people out there who could benefit from saying, you know what, I really don't want to do this, but I think this thing, whatever it is for you and your business, I'm going to take that leap and do it. And I'm going to find out, you know, maybe a month, maybe six months, maybe a year of doing whatever that is, getting comfortable with it, finding out if it's something that's going to work. And you may find that it's the best thing that you've ever done. And then you may find that it was a pretty stupid move, but uh, it's just like Michael Jordan. He missed more shots than he took. I don't think you can do that. He missed more shots than he made. And, uh, he was still, he's still considered, I don't care what you say, he's still considered as the best basketball player to ever live. And look, I ain't trying to be the best eBayer that's ever lived. I'm just trying to grow my business to a point where um, I'm not, on certain months, I'm not getting worried or concerned. If I get slow sales one day, I know that I have enough stuff in my store that's going to help me get through uh, the slower periods. And I just really don't think 200 items in my main store is the right number. So for you, it might be more than that. It might be much more than that. For others, it might be just a smaller store. But for me and what I need to make to pay my bills, it's got to be a bigger number to make myself feel, feel comfortable about my bills and eBay. That's my story. What do you think? I want your thoughts down below. This is huge for me, guys. I mean, I... I I feel very excited at, at the same time. It's somewhat scary because I am totally getting out of my comfort zone. I, I preach this to you guys all the time. So here I am, right? So uh, if I'm not willing to get uncomfortable, how dare I tell you to get uncomfortable? So guys, do me a favor. If you enjoy this content, do me a favor. Hit the like button at the very least. But if you want to see more of this content, hit the subscribe button. And of course hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we go live Mondays and Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Getting uncomfortable and you really don't feel like it's forking out the money that you really didn't want to have to fork out and taking a chance to see if this has any impact on your business. Well, sometimes you got to do that. And uh, it's just another example of how flipping ain't easy. I want you guys to have an excellent rest of your day. We will talk to you very soon. Take care.